Good afternoon. It's 2 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get the webinar started. Thank you for joining us today. This is Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center, and we have with us Mike McNeil from the safety section here at ODOT, who is going to provide a webinar for you today on the GIS crash analysis tool, the GCAT system. Um, let's see, uh, we have someone in the chat pod already asking a question. It says, for some reason I can't join the conference call. I try clicking join conference call, but it doesn't do anything. Um, I, it sounds like you're just going to need to go ahead and use the audio that was sent out in the email earlier, and I'll put that phone number up here in just a second um, for you to be able to um, join in the conference call. Let me put that up there real quick for him. Number. All right, so that should take care of um, getting her into the audio portion. So today's webinar is on GCAT, and just going to do a couple housekeeping items before Mike gets started. Um, as you've hopefully already seen, there is a chat pod in the bottom left hand side of the screen. If your chat pod is not displayed, um, please look for the circle with the thought bubble in it and click on that in order to display your chat pod. Um, it should then go ahead and pop up and you'll be able to ask questions during the webinar in that chat pod. Um, the other thing is we are attempting to record the webinar. Uh, don't let that dampen your enthusiasm for asking questions though because if you have that question it's very likely that someone else has it and that anyone who later views the webinar, if we are successful in recording it, um, could potentially have had the question as well and will benefit from the answer. So please pose your questions. Um, and if we are successful in recording it, we'll send a link out to you afterwards. If we're not, it's a good thing you're here. You're going to get to see it live and in person and ask your questions that way. So I believe that's all I have on the housekeeping items. Mike, are you ready? Uh, yes, can you hear me okay? I sure can. Thanks. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael McNeil with the ODOT Highway Safety Program. Uh, I do like crash analysis and safety evaluations. And uh, so one, GCAT is one of the tools that we use on a regular basis. And so thank you for joining the call today. And hopefully, um, whether you're, you've never used GCAT before, um, you've used it in the past, but look maybe looking for a refresher or, you know, you're a frequent user of GCAT, hopefully. Um, I kind of hit end, all ends of the spectrum for you, and uh, we answer some questions and um, kind of give you an overall view of the program and, and how to use it, and hopefully that it can be uh, beneficial to you in your, in your work duty. So um, I just, the way I have it set up is just a couple slides here. Um, just to kind of give you some background information and then I'll and then I'll just jump right into the tool and start doing uh, some examples and show you the program itself. Uh, so referring to uh, what is GCAT when we refer to GCAT it's the it stands for our GIS crash analysis tool and and then the, the, the CAM tool is what we'll all get into also so it's kind of a two-part system um, GCAT being the website where we search crash data, and that's through TIMS, and the CAM tool being our Excel file, as you can envision it, run, running stats on those crashes. So the purpose of the tool itself is to provide a convenient highway crash analysis tool for, um, I label out several agencies, ODOT, um, MPOs, county engineers, law enforcement, pretty much anyone that has a focus towards safety and is looking to uh, pull crash data and do analysis on it. Um, a lot of research uh, goes in underway with it, and um, so like um, research students from colleges and things like that as well. Um, but I underline convenient because our, our goal here is to make the tool uh, very user friendly and make it very uh, quick and efficient for you as far as pulling crash data so that you can spend more of your time, you know, analyzing those numbers and trying to figure out how, how you may want to use those results. But actually getting the crash data um, is our goal to make that quick and easy for you. Um, so just as I mentioned here, how it's set up, GCAT is, is the website where we're going to search the crash data. 
and then the Excel file is what we refer to as the CAM tool. So just a quick screenshot here of a, of a county where crashes are populated and say we want to zoom into a particular corridor within that county and look at those crashes and you can see there on the screen how, can, how we can draw a shape around a stretch of roadway there and, and just run crashes on that particular segment. And that's kind of the beauty behind this program is that you can narrow down to a particular corridor like you see here on the screen or even just a simple intersection and run crashes for an extended for either one year up to 10 years um, just for that um, specific location um, that we uh, one other thing that I'll mention is that the like public safety the Department of Public Safety crash report website um, where you can publicly review reports um, is a good resource as well uh, but the, the the difference main difference between the two programs is there you can just search uh, basic information as far as crash date and like law enforcement agency um, some general things in it, which then show crash reports but then this is where you can actually hone it down per location And then as a follow-up to what you just saw on the screen with all the crash um, icons is the numbers that come with it. So when I mentioned the CAM tool in the first slide, this is what this re this is what that revolves around. And as far as uh, populating these charts based on the numbers that show up on your screen, so you can get quick breakdowns um, for year, day of week, type of crash. Um, direction of those crashes, all, all kinds of different things that I'll show you once we get into the CAM tool. Um, but that's kind of the, this is set up so that it's easy to see trends that really pop out and really see what might be potentially a crash problem or crash issue out on that location. So at the same time that these uh, charts are generated, these graphs also get generated. So same data, uh, just different a oh, different way of visualizing it. And so both of these, both the charts and the graphs are in that Excel file that will be the end product of, of our crash results. Uh, up, on the up on the screen now I have this, uh, this two-page summary document and Victoria provided a link for it within the chat pod. It's just housed on our uh, ODOT website, but it just has, and I hand this out at my in-person trainings as well, and it just has some helpful links up at the very top um, as far as where to go to application login will take you to the TIMS website. Um, the third one down is that de um, Department of Public Safety website that I mentioned to view crash reports. The fourth icon down from there from the top says myo.access management. So anyone that doesn't have a, a GCAT login currently, um, that's where you can go and, uh, and, and, and sign up for a login. So it has a couple of various things on here, um, but the one thing that I do have highlighted in the red box there is, is the procedure. And I kind of show it up here on the screen now. So I, I kind of broke it down into like six or like eight steps, um, and the, but this takes you through both GCAT and the CAM tool itself. Um, so like steps one through five are pretty much all done on the website and then steps like six, seven, and eight are like within the Excel file. And so this this I provide on that sheet as a refresher. So again, for a lot of our GCAT users, that they might get in the system, run some crashes, might not get in the system again for a few months, and you know, might might just forget things on how to how to maneuver through the process. So this is what that's um, intended for. Okay, just to kind of, uh, before we jump into the program here, just to kind of give everyone a quick background, the the whole GCAT system is built off of crash data for the state of Ohio that we receive from public safety. The All of that crash data that public safety receives from law enforcement agencies across the state is from what you see here on the screen, The what we refer to as OH1, Ohio Crash Report Form. So it's a standard four-page report um, that, that details out and any, anything and everything that involves in that crash. Um, and, and anytime there is a crash where either an injury is involved or 
the dollar damage dollar amount is over a thousand dollars then it's one of these reports is supposed to be getting filled out uh, from a law enforcement agency and submitted then to public safety and and they can submit these crash reports anytime during that calendar year and then they also have a three-month period into the following year to submit these crash reports so any crash that occurs in 2019 um, you know hopefully should be getting submitted in 2019 but public safety leaves the window open until march 31st of 2020 um, to to for agencies to submit these reports so hopefully we can you know get all the reports from them uh, by that time and these are reports are filled out both electronically and uh through paper copy it's about i think it's pushing about 75 percent now of all all the crash reports in the state that come in electronic so uh, that number keeps increasing and that's a good thing um, as far as accuracy and data quality and, and just the the speed at which we get them so uh, that's kind of a uh, quick background as far as what, what actually feeds the system data-wise. Um, it's coming straight from these report forms. Uh, so lastly, I just have a screenshot of the TIMS website, and this is where we go, where we will be going to log into uh, GCAT. And I just highlighted on here so that you, you can see like when you first come to the screen uh, where the login button is, and that's in the bottom left corner where it says crash data search, uh, that, that'll, that's the GCAT login button. And for, for existing users and, and then new users who will be, um, who still need to sign up for a username, I just want to point out one thing. When, when, you, when you click on this crash data search page, bottom left corner, it's, it takes you to the to the login page right here, and you can see where it says existing GCAT user. That's where you'll go to, to log in with your username. And then we have a note there um, right above the login button, and I also kind of made it a highlighted item at the very bottom here, where it just says when you go to, when you click login, you'll get your, you'll get a pop-up for username and password. And for your username, you just have to type in that ODOT online with a backslash, and then you can type in your username. So for example, mine would be ODOT online backslash M McNeil. It's typically your know, first initial and last name, and then some will have numbers. Um, for any ODOT users that are on here, um, when you when you click login, it should directly log you in. Um, for non-ODOT users, you just have to enter in that ODOT online backslash first, as you can see in the note there. Okay, let me just jump over to the website here. All right. Uh, so here I'm just on the main ODOT homepage, and I'm just going to show you how we can get to the TIMS page then. So main ODOT homepage, we just scroll down, and on the left-hand side, it's about the fourth icon down that says... A uh, green button says TIMS Transportation uh, Information Mapping System, and this this website set up it houses like all our roadway inventory information, traffic ADTs, um, all, all sorts of good um, user um, roadway data essentially, and it you can access pretty much I think anything on this website. You don't need a login um, besides if you're coming coming here for GCAT. So if I go ahead and click on the crash data search button here in the bottom left corner, um, it, it just directly logs me in. Um, again, that's where you'll just click log in and do your username and password. Uh, so the website itself, again, going back to the convenient aspect of this tool, uh, we try, there's only two screens to the website. This is the first screen, and this is where we're going to search that crash data. W what what do we want to search? What years, uh, what locations, things like that. And then the, the, the second portion of the website will be the map view based on what, what we uh, kind of query on from this page. So I'm just going to kind of walk through each of these tabs and show you how they kind of function. 
Um, so the first one is the when occurred tab. And this just simply has year and month on it. And all these are just set up as when you know when you select it, you get drop downs and vice versa. Uh, so we have the crash years in here, dating back about 10 years. And so 2019, we've, we've just um, put here on the system, there's a few attributes that, uh, that, that still don't work for 2019 yet, um, just as far as like uh, crash type. And then, if, and, and then I'll show you a few other ones when we get down to within those tabs. But basically, any, anything 2018 and prior, um, the, the, the system's fully functional, and you'll, you'll get the data outputs and all the fields and everything like that. Um, these are just set up that, you know, when you select them, they highlight unselect. Um, so in that first tab, when it occurred, we get, we've got the year and the month. Uh, moving on to the second tab is crash details. And so there's the first one is crash type. And and we have these, all these crash types you can see here on the screen like that we set up at within our data here at ODOT so we can funnel crashes into particular crash types. Um, from the crash report, there's manner of collision. Um, and that has some of these already called out. Uh, but there's we, we have a lot of processes built in that look at not only manner of collision, but potential sequence of events and things like that to really try and funnel the crash into the the particular crash type that we're looking for and, and associating with the crash. And so you can see all the, the these different crash types here. Then the second uh, drop down is the crash severity. And there's five different levels uh, for crash severity, starting with the no injury or lowest level, which is uh, PDO for property damage only. Um, working your way from that up to the highest level of severity, which is the fatal. Uh, incapacitating is also known as serious injury. And so that, that was one of the major changes on the 2019 crash report form uh, was that each crash now is associated with one of these five categories right on the front page of the report. In prior years, it was either a PDO, an injury crash, or a fatal. Um, but if it was an injury crash, you'd have to look in the report to actually see what the highest level of, of severity was. Now, it's starting in 2019 here, it'll it'll say that right there on the, the, the front page and associate the crash to the highest level that occurred in the crash. Uh, Non-capacitating is re also referred to as a minor injury. Uh, the, the document number search uh, box right here, that's if you kind of already have an existing document number and, and, and or document numbers and you want to just paste them in here or enter them in and, and see where they show up on the map or um, that sort of thing. But typically the way that the GCAT works is we punch in all our attributes that we want here on this crash data search page. We download that crash data in the map. And then when we get it in the CAM tool, we get the output of the document numbers. So um, th this is occasionally used, but for, for, the, for the average user, um, the document number search box isn't really used as much here. Um, the third box is the emphasis areas. And in this drop down here, you can see all these different types of emphasis areas. These are ones that uh, we track quarterly here at, at, at ODOT um, as part of our Strategic Highway Safety Plan Committee. And uh, I know just a lot of users with safe communities and, and different agencies like to just sometimes run uh, focused crash results based on some of these um, outlying emphasis areas. So. Uh, we have senior driver on here, and so if I'm just hovering my mouse over these, so you, you can see that, that even though the text is cut off, that when you hover your mouse over it, it'll show the the full text. And so when one of these is selected, then when you download your crashes from here, it's only going to give you those 
um, attributes. Hey, my question for you. Rob wants to know, can you select all? Uh, that's a good question, Rob. Actually, so when, when nothing's selected right here and I download my crash data, it actually will give me all, all crashes and anything that was associated with one of these. Um, the only, it's just if I go and select one of them, that it narrows it down. Any results that I push forward now are only going to be alcohol related crashes. But if I just leave it blank and download the crashes, I'll, I'll, I'll get all the crashes that occurred in that area. So um, personal preference, I just usually, the only things I typically enter from this this entire website that you're seeing right here is the years and uh, sometime and then the location aspect to it. Otherwise, and, and that way I just like, because usually I'm going to the, the crash location to, to see the trend. So I want to get all the crash data and then really see what sticks out. Um, but if, you know, you can easily select something here and then that's what it'll give you um, in the results. So as far as like selecting all and having all these green, um, basically if they're all there on if they're all unselected, it'll, it'll, it's essentially the pretty much even be, even more and better data. Uh, so that's the emphasis areas. The fourth tab down is the driver vehicle. So this kind of gets more into like the nitty gritty of the crash report. Um, into like the, the type of unit involved in the crash, um, special function as far as different unique vehicle types as you can see here as I just scroll down. Um, traffic control type for that location and or intersection. And then uh, contributing circumstances and sequence of events. So all five of these fields that you see here are pulled straight from the crash report. Um, it's a, it's a direct mirror of what you would see on the crash report. So if, if I was to look at the report and, and look for a, um, a certain fixed object that might be like in sequence of events here, um, you would find it down here on the, within these categories um, directly as it shows up on the crash report as well. And so just as an example for sequence of events, I was looking at crash data uh, the other day for um, a location. I wanted to know any time a overturn or rollover crash uh, occurred there. So when I just click on that and enter it right there, it's actually going to, um, for each unit in the crash, there's up to six sequence of events. But it'll, by just entering it right here like this, it'll actually look through all the units involved in the crash and all their sequence of events. And any time that this was coded on that on that report, um, then it'll pop up. So there could have been three units, and and all all, all three units had a, like a a couple sequence of events filled out within it. But if just one of them had this overturn rollover in there, um, then it's it's keeping that crash report. And, and give it giving it to me in the results. So, so that's the uh, driver vehicle tab. And then the the last one is location. And so there's crash location here, um, which kind of looks at intersections. Um, you can select on and on or off ramp, um, railroad grade crossing, couple things like that. Particularly tied towards uh, intersections here. Uh, we have our 88 counties listed. And then we also have the um, city, village, townships. And so these, these are listed in here as just predetermined uh, through our technical services group as far as the boundaries that are set up for those. And you can see how the county is listed below it as well. So when we get to some, a certain ones that say township, um, there are a lot of townships in Ohio with the same name, so that's where having the county code right, county name right under it um, is beneficial in selecting the correct one. Uh, the this and then the last one is this NLFID search. This is if if you know like the exact segment that you want to run um, in, in a in a particular county, beginning with log points, um, with a begin and end log point. So. I think I'm just going to hold on this for for now, and then we'll revisit at the end and see um, 
if there's basically that stands for our network linear feature identifier and that's just like basically looking at the exact roadway that the crashes are snapped to um, from log point A to log point B and then just getting pulling all crashes within that little within that stretch right there um, so it kind of populates on its own if I select Adams County it'll give me all the routes that are in Adams County that we have located in there I click state route 32 and then here's where I'll enter my begin and end log points and it tells me the min and max we have for that county um, and then as far as obtaining these log points um, you can do that here in the Tim system but that's what I'll save till the end if we have uh, time or if someone has a specific question on it a lot of times that we just go to the county and zoom in and draw a circle around or shape around our location that we're looking for um, just a few few other things here uh, to mention since we're on the page these when you do have your query built and you're ready to move on to the next step the map um, you just simply hit this view and map button there's one here at the top of the screen one at the bottom of the screen and they both function the same way it's they're only set up like that so if you get a big search going that you don't got to scroll up and down uh, numerous times so same with the download button um, the download button is set up for if I want to run crashes for a particular uh, county or jurisdiction I'm not so concerned at like the locations of where those crashes occurred at maybe but I just want to get the overall numbers and so I don't need to go to the map to see like where those crashes occurred I just again just want the overall numbers so that's where I would I would just click download straight from this page and, and go straight into the cam tool uh, we do have a cam tool button over here on the right upper right corner of the screen and basically when you just click that it's it's basically just opening up the Excel file so you can do it both here and in the view and map page once once you're over there so that it's nice to have it here so that if you if you click the download button and you're ready to go with your data from this page then here's you still have a link right here for your Excel file all right so I'm just gonna start with uh, a couple examples and just kind of walk you through um, some things and show you how the, the system functions so uh, starting off very basic um, if I just wanted to look at crashes in a for a particular year in a particular county um, I'm just going to show you that right here so if I want to select uh, 2016 crashes and then for location I'm just going to come down to Adams County and so if I wanted to again know the crashes Adams County 2016 I could just hit the download button and it gives me the crashes right there five five hundred ninety five and then I can hit download and it'll give me in like an Excel anytime you hit the, this download or export when we're in the view and map it's going to give you an Excel file that that initial Excel file is actually just like the transfer file of data um, so the cam tool is, is where we'll import that to really get the charts and graphs um, so anytime you get this initial download so like if I click here download I would just I usually just save these to my desktop and then like once I import them in the cam tool I save the cam tool then but I just delete this this transfer file because it's really just transferring the data from the website to the um, cam tool so that's it would show us 595 if we went from the download we'll just go to view and map and here it, it's going to give us 592 and so we're going to carry over to there and so the difference there when we hit download and saw 595 and when we hit view and map it's given us 592 um, that that means that there's there's three crashes that we have for Adams County where we can't tie it to a location um, so the data is still in the system we have all the crash report data for it we just can't snap it to one of our roadways based on the information that was provided maybe invalid lat longs or the road name is maybe incorrect or wasn't filled out or something like that it's usually very small quantities where that happens but I just wanted to explain the difference there since you saw two different numbers um, so you can see here 
all the crashes in uh, 2016 for Adams County. Showing up here on the screen. And then if, if you look over to the left side of the screen, everything we pretty much do operates off this blue toolbar. And so that when you first come to any view and map page, the default uh, for GCAT is going to be these, these graphics and stuff right here, which is meant to draw shapes. And that's to get back to that at any point is right here in this little roadway icon that says filter crash events by graphic. And that brings us back to the default. I'm going to go over to the far left here, the hand side here where it says set visible layers. I'm going to select that, select under boundaries. And then I'll just click county so you can kind of see now a little bit better visualization for all these crashes and how they fit in Adams County. And then since we're right here in the on this layers tab, if we click one tab over where it says legend, here it gives us the crash severity um, color code. And so all those crashes as you can see on the map um, based on the different color dots, um, you can associate that then to the crash severity on the left hand side of the screen. And so if you, you can uh, zoom in then and say we just wanted to look at like one of these individual crash reports. Again, working off the, the, the blue toolbar here, third, third from the right or third from the left is this identify features button. And when we select that and then just bring our mouse to the to the map, it gives us the, the crosshairs there and I just click on a point. You can see that it kind of highlighted like the whole county. So I'll just select here in this county drop down and just go down to crash details because that's, that's what we want to see uh, as far as like the details just for this specific crash. Hey, Mike, we've got a question on the chat pod from Brianne Kirk. It says, when I run an analysis on a segment of road that happens to pass under a freeway, the results return crashes that happen on the freeway. Is there a way to set up the search so that it doesn't pull those crashes? Um, if, if you use that NLFID search and... and just search from di directly on that uh, section of roads, say for example, the one I showed here, Adams State Route 32. If I were to just run log point A to B, whatever that might be, it's only going to give me stuff that was um, snapped then to, to Adams State Route 32. However, if you're drawing a if you're drawing a shape around it, that same section um, in your freeway is you know over top of that roadway and it's included in it. Uh, when, when you get those results then in in the cam tool and when I get to that point I'll, I'll make a note here to bring it up that you can just filter those out so we'd be able to see you know we have 20 results um, 15 of them say state route 32 and then we got we can, I can see five that were coded on you know on 75 or something like that I-75 and then I can just remove those that, that's probably the best, easiest way. She said thank um, you. Yep, no problem. So then uh, when I click crash details and it just shows, and I click on a crash, you can see it's highlighted there. Anything on the far left side here is it's showing me the the details just for that specific crash and I can just um, third second second third link down here just this crash report link uh, when I select that hit open here you can see then the crash report um, for that particular crash and so as, as you can see here a lot of the the personal information for the unit unit type and even the motorist um, information is is blanked out here um, when we when we generate these reports on the, on our ODOT end um, we remove all that personal information so 
I just I just mentioned that because I know sometimes like whether whether it be ODOT district offices or some others, they were they are looking at tying it back towards um, looking at uh, fixed object related crashes where you know guardrail was damaged or this or that and they're they're trying to just tie it back to an insurance company or something like that. But um, just for our engineering purposes, all that is removed. But if you view this report, the same report on public safety's website. Um, all that information is publicly available. So that that's just kind of a quick showing just to how you, if you just want to view like one or two crash reports um, and how you can just qu kind of quickly get those just by clicking identify features and then clicking on the point and the crash report link is there on the far left. So that was just a, a few uh, little quick tips since we came to the screen to view all the crashes here in Adams County. Okay, I'm just going to jump back to and whenever you just hit back on the on your web browser and it brings you back to your crash data search, usually it typically saves in what it, whatever you have it entered in previously. Uh, so we just have the clear button at the top here right next to the view and download button and that'll just clear anything you've selected on this um, entire page. Um, so the next example that I have is is kind of the meat and potatoes of the program itself and in honing down on a particular location to pull crash data uh, just for that. So we're in this example, I'm going to show you how to draw a circle and uh, a polygon around a stretch of road. So I'm just going to select uh, three years of, of data. So you can see 2015 through 2017 selected there. And then I'm just going to enter in a county, uh, Madison County. So the way the way the system kind of operates is even though I just want to look at one particular intersection and a little stretch of road next to it in this example, I have to uh, go to the county with all the crashes populating, and then we're just going to zoom into that particular area. Um, so it kind of shows everything, and then we just zoom into what we want. So 2015 through 17 here, three years um, for for Madison County because that's the county that this this intersection's in. So I'm just going to hit View and Map. Um, it gives me it, you know 3,000 results, but again those it it doesn't matter to me how many uh, how many it would have given me there. I'm just going to start uh, zooming in to the particular area of interest. And so I'm at my at the intersection now here at uh, State Route 29 in US 42 um, that I want to run crashes for. So we can see some you know have occurred there at the intersection. So if I want to run uh, search the crashes just at this intersection, um, I'll just leave point selected here on the left hand side. Um, it sets the default to our 250 foot buffer, which is typically what we use for intersection analysis. And then I'm just going to hit draw, select a point in relation to the intersection there, and then hit search. And so here you can see how it, uh, when it searches, it'll give you the number of features found, number of crashes found. And even though it still shows these crashes outside the circle um, the really though if you download this data set you're only going to get anything that fell within that boundary um, these 11 crashes essentially so that's how you can draw a circle um, you can also manually draw a circle if you if you select circle there we'll click draw and then you can kind of see the note here click to add a shape or press down to start and then uh, let go to finish so if i just click and hold then you, you can draw the circle to however big you want. But just for example purposes, I'll just go back to point and just draw my 250 foot right there. And then I'm just going to continue crashes on this on this corridor as well down to um, this Snyder lane here, just to kind of show you how to draw like um, for a corridor analysis. So 
again using our drop down on the left hand side again point and circle pretty much used for intersections line and polygon are used for stretches of road so and it just comes down to you know your preference on how you want to build it so if, if i if i select line and click draw then i'm really just snapping on the roadway and i'll double click when i'm done and then it builds in your buffer like that and then the very last option is the polygon and when i select draw on this anytime i left click it drops a point and then just double click to lock it in so there you can kind of see how um, the shapes are are used for whether it's an intersection or a corridor here you can see that the shape overlaps um, and that's perfectly fine when the crash data is downloaded you won't get any duplicates um, so if, if this is you know the for this example if these these are the crashes that i wanted to run i have everything selected so after now that i've drawn everything i'll go ahead and hit search and you can see that they're highlighted here and it's given me 24 features found and so in the bottom right corner and this is like the these are the types of steps that are mentioned on that summary document um, just to keep you in the process and making sure you you're not like forgetting any crucial steps as far as like importing data exporting data that sort of thing so in the bottom right corner is export data when you click that drop down you you'll click on the very first one that says to excel and then i'll just click it one more time one you'll know to click it turns green it says download and here it's it's given me this transfer file now and saying here's the 24 crashes you want to download um, what what do you want me to do with them so i'm this is where i'm just going to save it uh, to the desktop and so now that that transfer file with those 24 crashes is saved on my desktop now i'm going to come back to this blue toolbar up at the top here and I think this is something like step six on that summary procedure. Um, I'm going to open up the cam tool, which is the second one down right here. Now it's going to give me this pop-up. I'm just going to hit open. And basically this is what it will will give you. And uh, when you first open this up, um, don't get overwhelmed. There's a lot going on on the screen, but it's a pretty easy file to uh, maneuver around in between with like your crash data and stuff. So actually all these boxes you see right here are pretty much just web links. So this will take you to the GCAT resources page on our ODOT website. You can launch Tim's right here in the middle of the page. That'll take you back to the website. Um, view crash reports on public safety's website. And then um, these the how-to recordings as far as like what you what you're sitting in on right now so a lot of it's just uh, links here but what we're going to do is import those 24 crashes for that area um, so we're going to click on this analysis toolbox here on the left hand side of the screen which is uh, step seven on your sheet and then we'll, we just click this tim's gcat import button and so it says CSV or XLS, and that's basically just saying whether you downloaded your data through th that view and map button, in which we did here through the export data, or if, if on the crash data search page, right at the very beginning, if you just hit download all your crash data, um, that they'll both import same way. So here, when I go to import, it's asking me for that transfer file with those 24 crashes. I'll come to my desktop. I'll just click on the top one that was filtered crash events. And you can see here the 24 cra yep, crashes that showed up in the background. And then the very last step on that summary document 
is to just come one tab over from the import to this analysis button. And then we just hit this uh, second analyze data button. And it, while it's processing here, it's taking those 24 crashes and associating them into all the different pivot tables and, and generating those. Which is what you can see right here. So it gives us our total number 24 there. Um, we can see that three were injury crashes, 21 property damage only. Um, we can see the breakdown per year, seven, eight, and nine for those three years. The type of crash associated with those. And then a lot of this is uh, once you just kind of get a feel for looking at uh, some of the data and, and looking at the charts, uh, you can kind of get a feel for, you know, what trends might might stick out. But we got contributing factors in there. Um, directional data can sometimes be very helpful um, when you're running a stretch of road. Maybe the the westbound crashes are like 90 percent and the eastbound is only 10 percent. Then, you know, that can steer some insight as far as what what might be an issue out there. Um, so there's the charts and then one tab over is the graphical analysis. And here you can see the graphs. And so again, all this is generated right when these charts are generated. And then these are set up so that, you know, file print, I think it puts two on a page. And so it's easy to um, have a good output, output for this data if you're looking to print something out included in something. Um, so that kind of gives an overview of the, of the charts there. Um, the main portion of this is, is going to be on the crash data tab. So even out of all the tabs you see at the bottom of the Excel file, really the only ones that you need to focus on are the one I'm currently on, which is the crash data tab. And this is the tab that the data gets imported on. The, the next tab is the data analysis, which is the charts, and then the graphical analysis, which you can see there. So really just those three are the main ones that, for, for the most part, that you'll probably be using. And so um, in, in this example, uh, we can see here um, our 24 crashes. And the kind of the beauty of having it in the Excel file here is that then we can um, pretty much filter and sort and, and kind of rearrange this data to, to however we want. So I, uh, I'll, a lot of times on crash analysis, come in here, um, remove the animal crashes. If, if we're running a standard like crash analysis, and then it gives us a lot of other attributes here. And so when I start scroll from left to, to right, you can kind of see um, some, of the, some of the fields that really pop out. And we have, we carry up to two units of, of data on, on this um, spreadsheet here. So you can see like in this column here, it says uh, driver age one, which means for unit one. And a lot of these columns have the one after it. And then we start to get out here to um, unit, unit two information. So we house that for two units, the data portion for those um, in GCAT or in the CAM tool here. Uh, and that's pretty much just for the sake of uh, either single vehicle crashes or uh, two vehicles involved in a crash is like over 90% of the crashes in Ohio um, each year. So having just, you know, two units, being able to have two units of data in here, you know, captures a good majority of the crashes. Um, if there's three units or more and you want to get inf any information on those, um, probably the best thing to do is either just manually look at the report and all that information's on there. Um, it's just that for data purposes, uh, we just house up to two units. Um, but starting here on the far left side of your screen, the very first column for these 24 uh, crashes, as you can see the crash report link right there. So as, as I mean, a crucial part of the 
data analysis is is looking at looking at the reports themselves and really seeing what the officer uh, writes up as far as then the narrative and diagram so here's the crash report again um, okay this one yeah this one was a deer crash let me try a Another one here. Hey, Mike, we've got about 10 minutes left. Just wanted to okay. let you know. Thanks. So we can see right here, uh, looking at the narrative and diagram, um, basically looks like a, a rear end, but this this one's labeled it as, a, as far as a backing crash um, into, into that other vehicle. So it kind of gives us a feel. A, a lot of times I'll be in uh, the cam tool here and then of these 24 crashes just kind of manually go through them it, depending on what you're looking for if, if you need to go to that level um, but that's where that can be done and so a lot of yeah again information is is housed here every, uh, that we have on our system for up to two units um, you can kind of again the charts and graphs that go with it um, but that's pretty much the uh, procedure to kind of go through uh, for GCAT and if I guess if anyone has uh, questions at this time I can um, address some otherwise I can you know just kind of provide and walk through of another example I've been kind of prodding them along in the chat pod asking if they had any other questions so I'd say if they haven't put any in go ahead and keep going and if any come in I'll read them off to you Okay. Yeah, and I have it. I have it up too, so I can see them as they come in. Okay. Cool. Um, so, just uh, w one other example that I I like to show is uh, it just kind of uses attributes from a lot of different of these drop downs, and it kind of just shows you how it builds it all. So, uh, what I'm going to walk through here is looking at uh, like f fatal and serious injury crashes that are motorcycle related. Um, for two different counties over the last three years. So kind of just breaking that down, we'll, we'll try 2016, 17, and 18 under crash details here. For crash severity, I just want to look at serious and fatal crashes. Under emphasis areas, I'm just going to select. Here's uh, a motor, question for motorcycle. you. Dennis yep. O'Neill wants to know: Can you search for work zone crashes in the queue? Uh, so, Dennis, we have this work zone uh, f flag right here, which basically there's a there's a checkbox on the crash report form that says work zone related, and if that's checked, then then this box would essentially be fulfilling that. Um, I guess if that answers is a question, okay. Um, so yep, that work zone related box right there would would, would qualify all those. Uh, so here I'm just going to select motorcycle, and then for my counties, I'll just do Summit and Stark. So just kind of recapping, I'm looking at three years, the last three years here, 16, 17, and 18 for any fatal and serious injuries that involved motorcycles in Stark and Summit County. And I'll hit view and map. It says 196. And they should populate here in a second. And I have my legend up here on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, to kind of show you, um, so anything that was a serious serious injury motorcycle crash is uh, purple, and then any any fatal motorcycle crashes are in the red. And again, these all of these plots shown on the map are just just motorcycle related. Not to say that the motorcyclist was at fault or not, um, just the fact that a, a motorcyclist was involved in the crash. And so you can see the points there. And if we wanted to 
um, you, you, we could either just download this all 196 of these and 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 see what the uh, get the overall data for them, or if you you know wanted to run a partic particular stretch of let's see if I come back over to here and just kind of draw my polygon around these those three crashes hit search and then just kind of work work my way through that. Um, export data to Excel and then kind of look at um, the, those again. So I think I have, I think I ran this from 2015 to 17 and this is essentially the CAM tool for it. So as you can see here, motorcycle fatality, serious injuries uh, for Stark and Summit. And so this one was for again, 15 to 17. But here you can see the breakdown of uh, per year um, of the fatals and injuries. And then over here on the right hand side, we actually have this is based on a, this page right here. This page six is, is looking at on a people uh, basis. So over here you can see where it says on the left hand side, it says 30 fatal crashes. And then on the right hand side on page six here, you can see for fatalities that I'm highlighting, uh, the grand total says 31. So we know that one of those motorcycle crashes was was a double fatal. But that, that I just wanted to point out the fact that this whole page is on a on a people level basis, and anyone involved in the crash, if an occup if, if if there was a van involved that had five people in it, then it's capturing all those injuries or non injuries on this page over here, whereas the crash itself might just be one injury crash. Um, but again, the, you, you kind of get the feel for. Uh, the charts here and you know just to show you like how quick I was able to just kind of pull some of that information and, and zoom into a particular area if I wanted to and then you can you know it's simple enough just to hit back if you wanted to change something jump in your query here remove things add things um, try and just make it yeah easy for you to get to get the data so I think uh, again if, if, if you just uh, print out that summary document and just kind of keep it handy it, it'll uh, you know walk you through the process if you don't have access yet it'll show you how to get access on there with the myo.website. website um, and then just as you're using GCAT if you have questions about either logins or you're running you're running trying to run a certain search but it doesn't seem to be populating correctly or just that something wasn't doesn't seem right to you um, then my you know my contact information is at the bottom of that sheet um, so you can either call or email me and we can usually uh, figure it out together so Mike that's so um, good of you to put your information out there so everyone can contact you directly and you know I know that we asked for questions all throughout the webinar I probably shouldn't have used the word prodded earlier but you know I do feel sometimes like you know we know there's questions out there and we just haven't um, been able to get people to ask them or pose them um, during the webinars so I appreciate the folks that did pose their questions today and I want to let everyone know that um, Mike will be offering another webinar two months from now. We'll send information out about it, but that webinar is going to be similar to one we did last time where we're going to ask you for your questions ahead of time. So if you um, are shy or bashful about putting your question in the chat pod, you'll be able to submit them through a link um, ahead of time, and that way you know Mike can have those and can work on the solutions for you before the webinar actually happens. So thanks, Mike, so much for your time today in providing this webinar. It's a great tool and it definitely helps all of us in our work to lower and hopefully eliminate the fatalities on the roadways. Yeah, no problem. Thanks everyone for joining. Yes, uh, thank you. All right, everyone have a good rest of the day. Thanks. Thanks.